Hello and welcome to this tutorial video. For this tutorial, we'll be running through the heat pump section. This will include design calculations, ground loop sizing and the compliance certificate. Before you start, you'll need to complete the building calculations in order to complete the heat pump section. The first section to look at is the design calculations. The initial page is to collect some details about the, the property and the heat loss calculations that you've completed previously in the building calculations section. So first of all, ask for surveyor name and date. This, These fields aren't compulsory, but they are there if you need to add the information and also the existing heating system. You've got a drop down with some options in there and also an NA option if it's a new build which doesn't currently have a heating system. Also ask for details of the MCS standard that you're complying with. So you've got all the previous versions there to select. Obviously you should select the, the most recent one. Then have an option to select the heat pump type. You've got ground source heat pump, air source heat pump and air source high temperature heat pump. The reason there's an extra option for the high temperature heat pump is that it uses a different SPF. Then have an option to state whether the property has an EPC or not. If you select no, the remaining fields in that section will disappear. But if there is an EPC, select yes, and you'll be asked to fill in the details for that. Um, if the customer is planning on applying for the RHI, they should have an EPC available, and therefore the, the information would be used later on to predict the rate of RHI that they may receive. As you go down, there's calculations for um, space heating and hot water heating. There are options to select these as calculated or manual. If you select manual, you'll be able to input the information. If you select calculated, it'll pull in from the previous sections in the building calculations. The same applies to the hot water heating. If you select manual, you'll be able to input that manually. If not, select the calculator and it'll pull in the information from the previous sections. Then have an option to add in the details of an auxiliary heat source or immersion. In this case, we need an immersion heater. Then have an option to add in details of an auxiliary heat source. If you select yes, you'll then be asked to add some information about the type of an auxiliary heater and also its efficiency. Finally, in this section, you've got heat, uh, financial information. So the cost per unit of electricity for the heat pump. At the time of filming this, the average given by the Energy Saving Trust is 14 pence. However, if the customer has the information already or you're able to access it through their energy bills, you should input the exact figure that they are currently paying for the electricity. If not, use the Energy Saving Trust website for the averages. But at present, it's 14 pence. Also, you have to add the cost per unit fuel for the alternative heat source. So again, just add that in pence per kilowatt hour. Then asked if the installer is intended for RHI. If you select no, then the, the final section will disappear. If it is intended for RHI, select yes and you'll be asked to add the, the rate of RHI in. So as we've selected a ground source heat pump, the current rate for that is 19.1 pence. If you need to check the current rate, um, go to the Ofgem website and there's a table on there available to check the rates. Once you've completed all that section, press the next button and it will save that information for you and take you on to the next section. In this section, it just asks for details about the heat pump that you're installing. So as we've selected a ground source heat pump on the previous page, it'll ask you for the manufacturer, model number, MCS certification number. If you're unsure of the MCS product certification number, just select the product search option on the right hand side and that'll take you to the MCS website where you can look up the, the certification number for the product. The fields that are filled in with, with blue are already pre-populated for you based on information you've previously inputted. There's just one other one on here that requires you to add the information, which is the kilowatt capacity at design conditions. This should meet the requirements of the power heat loss to cover the requirements of the building. Once you complete that information, just press the next button. The next button acts as a save rather than moving through the tabs on the left hand side. Next section is the design calculations, and this will provide you with information of the in information inputted and also some calculated 
like the proportions and energy consumption section. Once you've had a look through that, click the next button and it'll take you to the financial summary, which will give you some running cost information and um, predictions for the RHI. In this case, as we stated, there was an EPC available. It's based those calculations on the EPC. If you select no for the EPC, then it'll be based on the calculations. However, your customer should be informed that the um, actual RHI payments will be based on the EPC rather than your um, heat loss calculations. So they should be provided with that information so that they're aware. Once you've checked through all the information, you can press the print button on the right hand side and that'll open a PDF version of the results for you. Once you complete the design calculation section, you can now return to the heat pump menu and the next section to complete would be ground loop sizing for the ground source heat pumps. If you're just doing an air source heat pump, you can move straight onto the compliance certificate. As you go into the ground loop sizing section, you'll be asked to select the type of ground heat exchanger. So you have a borehole option, horizontal or slinky. Then asked to select the type of ground. So you have a full list there of different types of ground for you to choose from. Again, the fields of a blue background are already pre-populated for you based on previous information. As you go down, you need to add in the spacing and also the maximum power extracted per unit. You can go to the lookup tables by clicking the link on the right hand side and work out what your um, extracted power would be. Then I have an option to select the extraction method, either absorption or electrical, and finally the total length of ground heat exchanger required. Click the next button, that will save the information for you and take you to the design calculations. Press next again, you'll then be able to add comments to that. Um, and then once you're happy with that, <coughs> press the save and then the print button and it'll open a PDF version of the table three from the MCS heat pump standard. Once you're happy with all that, click the back chevron and again, it'll take you to the main heat pump menu. And then finally, for air source and ground source, you can go to the compliance certificate and complete the information. A lot of this information will be pre-populated for you and pulled in from previous sections. So you have on this initial page just some general information about the install of the address of the owner, install and your company's address. Um, to pull in the company details, you need to fill in the My Profile section in the My Settings area. Once you've filled in all that information or double checked it, press the next button and work your way through the different sections of the um, compliance certificate. As you go through, please use the next button as that will save the information you've inputted. A lot of the questions will have a drop down option, either yes or no. However, most of them are set to what the most typical answer would be. So just double check the questions as you go through them. So as you work your way through, as you can see, some of the fields are blue, so they're pre-populated based on your calculated figures. Um, but just double check them as well as the drop down options. On this section for heat emitter, you have an option to state how many emitter types are installed. So there are 12 different emitters you can choose from. If the property is full of standard radiators, then you just select one type and then select the emitter type from the list. If you have two types of emitters, so partly standard radiators and partly underfloor heating, select two, and then you'll be able to select standard radiator and underfloor heating, just to state that there are two different types of underfloor of emitter. And then following on, if you do have underfloor heating, you'll then need to select the floor covering type. And again, you have a number to select. If there's no underfloor heating, just select the NA. And then you've got an option to add the floor covering. Again, just keep working through the tabs by pressing the next button and double checking the answers as you go through.
once you get to the confirmation page, just add your details of the person completing the compliance certificate, their job title and the date it's completed. Once you're happy with it, press save and then the print button and the print button will open a PDF version of the compliance certificate ready for you to use on the MCS database. And you'll then be able to use that to register the install and produce an MCS certificate for it. Again, just press the back chevron when you've completed with that section. It'll take you back to the main heat print menu. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions,